in a hypothesis test. After we finish writing down the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis, the next step will be look, look at your significance level. All right. So we talk about significance level alpha before when we talk about the uh, confidence interval. Right. Uh, we usually use alpha for a significance level. Your alpha is the area of the critical region of the sampling distribution. So if your null hypothesis is with the less than symbol, then you will be dealing with a left tailed test. So that means your alpha or the area of the critical region will be on the very left. You will have a left tail test. If your null hypothesis is with a greater than sign, that means you will have the right tail test. That means your alpha will be the area in the right tail. If your null hypothesis has the not equal sign, that means you will have a two-tailed test. That means you will have alpha over two in both tails. Once your data fall into the critical region, then we will say uh, your sample statistic is significantly high or significantly low. Your uh, sample statistics will be significant. Remember, alpha is a very small value, right? The probability of your data uh, get contained in the critical region alpha should be really, really low because otherwise it won't be significant. The common choices for alpha are 0 0.5, 0 point, uh, 0 0.05, 0 0.01, and 0 0.1. The most common one will be 0 0.05. The next step is identify the test statistic. So once we find out the sample statistic, how do we know if the sample st statistic will be significantly high or significantly low. We need to turn them into uh, a, a test statistic. So for example, if you're dealing with the proportion p hat, which is the sample proportion, the corresponding test statistic will be z. Uh, if your sample st statistic is the sample mean, which is the x bar, then you will have to turn it into t as its test statistic. Right? If you're dealing with the population, uh, sorry, the sample standard deviation s, then you will have to turn it into the test st statistic chi square. Remember, this is all under the assumption that the null hypothesis is true. Once we find the test statistic, then we can use the test statistic to find the area in the tail and decide if your sample data is extreme or not extreme. Okay, like I said, uh, for different parameter, you will have different test statistic. So these are the uh, test statistic uh, or the hypothesis test we will talk about in this chapter. Uh, but here we let's have a general idea, right? For population, for population proportion p, you will use. Uh, a test statistic Z. And this is the formula you will be using to calculate the test statistic. Right, so if you look at the formula, P will be the sample proportion we will 
calculate. The p hat, sorry, p hat is the sample proportion, and this p is the population proportion. So how do we know this? We will use the h naught value. We will assume that you know h naught is true. We will use that value and divide it by you know square root of p times q divided by n. Anyway, for mean. If you want to deal with the uh, population mean, uh, there are two possible ways. One is the T statistic, one is Z. Uh, you know, T is used when sigma is not known, and when sigma is known, we will use Z. We'll talk about these two uh, later in chapter eight. And uh, we already know this in uh, confidence interval. We are dealing with uh, standard deviation and uh, variance. The test statistic you will use is called chi-square, and this is the formula for it. Let's use the drone delivery example to explain how to find the test statistic. So remember, this is our non-hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. And with the given population uh, proportion, we assume zero point. We assume the non-hypothesis is true. So with given p equals zero point five, and the sample size is one thousand nine. We have decided our sampling distribution of sample proportion, which is a z distribution. Okay, then you then you have to check if the requirements are satisfied. Okay, so. Here we briefly check it is satisfied. We'll talk about the requirements uh, in details in different section, but here we check. Okay, the requirements are satisfied, and the sample statistic will be p hat. You know, use your uh, x divided by n, which is zero point five four, which we can uh, easily. Calculate it from the problem, and the test statist statistic will be the z statistic. You know the z score for this p hat. Using the formula, you will calculate the z score is also. You know, going through the calculation, you will find the z score for this p hat is two point. Uh, Five four, and we want to know if this z score is telling us your uh, sample is extremely high or not extremely high, right? Okay, so after you find your test statistic to decide if your sample uh, statistic is extreme or not. You need to find something called a p-value. This is basically the area in the tail, right? According to a uh, different kind of test, you will have uh, different p-values. Uh, if it's left tail or right tailed test, then your uh, area in the tail will be exactly your p-value. But if you happen to have a two-tailed test, Remember, for two-tailed tests, that means for the non-hypothesis, you will have not equal to um, in the statement. Anyway, if you have a two-tailed test, that means your p-value is twice the area in the tail, because you have to not only count one side of the tail, you also have to count the other tail of the test, since it's a two-tailed test. So for two-tailed test, the p-value is twice of the tail area you calculated, and uh, for the other, for the left-tailed test or right-tailed test, 
it is exactly uh, the tail of the um, area of the tail. So, for example, uh, for the test statistic z equals 2.55, we just calculated earlier, uh, the area to its right, or the p-value, is 0 0.0054. So this value will be the p-value. So how do we calculate uh, the p-value? Uh, either you can use the chart, the z-score chart, since we're dealing with the z-score here in this pr particular problem, or you can use um, technology uh, to figure out your p-value. So once we decide what the p-value is, uh, we can write a conclusion. So you want to compare your p-value with alpha. If your p-value is smaller than alpha, you have to reject the non-hypothesis. So for example, say the area here is alpha, excuse me, say this is alpha here, right? And your p-value, which is the area in the tail, is, it's hard to tell, is less than alpha. Okay, I will use blue for p-value. So if your uh, p-value is low, that means your sample data is very extreme, right? So we will reject the non-hypothesis because it is very, it's far away, significantly lower than the non-hypothesis, right? So uh, if your p-value is low, lower than alpha, then you reject the non-hypothesis. If your p-value, however, is greater than alpha, then we fail to reject the non-hypothesis. Let's look at the graph here. Um, so we in the middle, it's the non-hypothesis, right? This is your alpha, alpha, which is the critical region in the tail. And if your p-value is greater than alpha, so that means this will be your p-value. So that means your sample is not very extreme. It's not sig significantly lower than the non-hypothesis. So there's in not enough evidence to reject the non-hypothesis. So we fail to reject the non-hypothesis. And usually we will make the conclusion that there's not sufficient evidence to support the alternative hypothesis. Remember earlier uh, for the drone delivery problem, we got the p-value uh, equal to 0 0.0054. And this is a lot less than 0 0.05 if we use 0 0.05 as our significance level. So that means our sample, the sample we pick is very extremely low. Right, or we can say it's very extreme. So there is sufficient evidence to uh, reject the non-hypothesis, or you can say to support the uh, alternative hypothesis. So the conclusion we make is there is sufficient evidence to support the claim, which is uh, more than half of the consumers are uncomfortable with drone deliveries. So, in other words, if your p-value is less than your alpha, that means your data value is extreme. Right? Here you will always reject the null hypothesis. So this is how you make the conclusion.
there is sufficient evidence to either you say it's uh, supporting H1. There is sufficient evidence to support H1, whatever your H1 is. Or you can say there is sufficient evidence to warrant the rejection of H0. Right, depend on the uh, claim given in the problem, you will choose to use support H1 or warrant the rejection of H0. So you want the claim to be the same here. So if your claim is the same as H1, you will say support H1. If your claim is the same with H0, you will say warrant the rejection of H0. So totally depend on your problem. Okay, now let's look at this uh, practice problem. So assume we have a significance level of alpha equals 0 0.05 and our claim is less than 51% of adults would erase all their personal information online if they could. The hypothesis test result is a p-value equals 0 0.2058. And first, we want to state a conclusion uh, about the non-hypothesis. Okay, before that, let's write down the non-hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Okay, so first of all, the claim is less than 51% of the doubt would erase all their personal information online. So we're talking about the population uh, proportion here. So P is, the claim is less than 0 0.51. So this is the claim, all right? So using the claim, we can get the non-hypothesis will always be the one with the equal sign. So P equals 0 0.51. The alternative hypothesis will be P is less than 0 0.51. Okay, so since we know the P value is uh, 0 0.2058 you want to compare your p-value with your alpha it is obviously bigger than your alpha which is 0 0.05 so what does it tell you it tells you the sample you picked is not very extreme it's pretty the probability of getting that sample is 0 0.2058 Right, it's not a significant, significant low value. So here we will fail to reject the non-hypothesis. Okay, so here's the conclusion. Fail to reject the non-hypothesis. Now B part, State a f state of final conclusion that addresses the original claim. Okay, so since we fail to reject the non hypothesis, you would say uh, there is not sufficient evidence. Okay, there's not sufficient evidence either to support H1 or warrant the rejection of H0. But if you look at the claim, your claim is the same as H1. So you want to address the original claim in your conclusion. So I will use this. So your conclusion will be there is not sufficient evidence to support and you address H1 in words to, to support the claim that less than 51% of the adult would erase all of their personal information online if they could. 